it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1162, the Slim Flaps and Frames, and you can check out all of our die designs at KarenBerniston.com. The Slim Flaps and Frames creates the flaps and some decorator pieces to fit a 4x9 piece of cardstock to create a four panel slimline card. It does not make a pop-up on its own, so you would add one of our other pop-up dies. This one from the packaging sample uses our Mini Pops pop-up. It was actually a Mini Pops card that made me design this die because I had made a card like this by cutting all the flaps by hand as part of the assembly video for our Mini Pops pop-up die set. People really liked that card and that concept of the four flap opening slimline, so we created a die to do it easier. Now a lot of times you'll use magnets to hold your flap closed, so I've got magnets kind of hidden in the card and I will do that a lot with slim flaps and frames, but I wanted to teach in the video today a different type of closure which is a twine wrap. So this is the card I'll be making in the video today. It does have that wrap around twine closure so that I did not have to use magnets, I just had to add a little extra flap to the bottom. I also wanted to show a different pop-up being used in the Slim Flaps and Frames, so I will be using the Upsy Daisy today. Now my card has a From the Garden Happy Spring theme, but just really think of these assembly videos as generic techniques. So just swap out the colors and the styling and you can make that into any themed card. If you start from a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock, and this is just regular 80 pound textured cardstock, it doesn't have to be textured, this just happens to be a color I liked, and I'm going to cut it at nine inches, then turn it in the trimmer and cut three four inch strips. And two of those four by nine pieces are going to be for the background of my card. Then I will take the extra pieces and use them to cut all four of the flaps. So the wider piece that's left over, the 4x9, that one will just barely fit the top fold flap and the side fold flap together. And then I can get two side fold flaps from the other longer strip. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die, and today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. So the one that has the long top fold, I just go ahead and fold along the score line, and then it's a great idea to take a bone folder and just really get a nice crisp fold to that. Same thing with the side fold flap. The die has done the scoring to create the side flap. I always like to fold towards myself first. I just find it folds easier that way, and then I reverse it to make it a mountain fold. And that's just because I have texture to my cardstock and I want the pretty texture on the front. And then for my other strip, I can get my two remaining side fold flaps. And you can definitely experiment with different configurations of flaps, or maybe you're just going to use three. You know, it's just completely up to you. But for a typical card, you would cut three side fold flaps and one top fold. And then for this card, because I'm doing a different closure, I'm going to take my top fold die and cut it out of a scrap so that I get the tapered tab and a little bit beyond that. So it doesn't really matter how much, that's gonna kind of glue to the back of the card, but I just want to get the tapered tab plus some distance beyond that. So this is my extra little flap at the bottom, and since I'm planning on putting a pop-up inside the card, I'm going to make kind of a river fold, one that has some thickness to it. So I'm just going to take my scoring board and add another score line the next tick over from the one that was already in the piece. And that will give me two folds to that piece that when both are folded the same way will create a little thickness to that flap. Okay, so now I'm ready to glue all my flaps to one of my base pieces. So that's a four by nine piece of cardstock. I'm going to start with the top fold one. I like glue for this. I'm using my Line Code Neutral pH adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website. But if you wanted to use a strong tape, that would also work. So the top fold is going to go right at the top and again, just line it up perfectly. It's the same width as the piece of cardstock. It's four inches and just get the fold right on the edge. So I like to use one top fold at the top and then three side folds to finish out the card. And on those, I like to alternate the side that they're attached. But again, this is all customizable. So you could definitely explore different ways to attach those flaps and have different types of cards. But I like to use the first one as a guide so that when I place that on, I get it so that it's just meeting up to the first one. Then for the next side fold flap, I attach it to the right side of the card. And again, I use the one that's right above it, just butting it right up next to it so that I can get it straight 
and so that each flap just meets the one below it. And then my final side fold flap will attach again to the left side of the card. And I can see that where the sticker came off, the cardstock has left a dark spot on the inside, but it's okay because I'm going to cover it with paper. To make the closure, I'm going to use the washers and the spacers die out of our flap and closure die set. I'll use an interesting piece of shiny black cardstock I found in my stash and then just white cardstock with double-sided adhesive on the back for the spacers and then the washers will be out of the shiny black. Now I'm just doing little pieces so I swapped to my little easy cuts machine for this. So for my extra flap that I cut, I'm going to figure out where the center is at two inches and just put a pen mark on the tapered tab in that location. And then I'm going to stack up three of my spacers over that black pen mark. And that is made easier by the fact that I have that double-sided adhesive on the back of the cardstock before die cutting so that those little spacers are just stickers. Then I'll pierce a hole down through the center of those spacers and through the flap itself. I have a long piece of baker's twine that's about 20 inches long. And then I'm going to get the end through that hole in the flap. And I think the easiest way to do that is just using one of those little flosser tools that you get in the grocery store near your dental floss. And then I can pull that twine through. And then I can just tape the end down inside the flap. Okay, I'm going to hold the washer on now with a brad. And I just went stash diving and found some blue brads that had even a little glitter top to them. And I'm just going to go through the washer, through the spacers, and then open up those brad prongs inside the flap, making sure that they're horizontal so that I can cover them with paper later. Okay, now I have one half of the closure on and I can go ahead and attach my extra little bottom flap to the base of the card. So I just need my strong adhesive for that all over that section. Then I just line it up with the bottom of the card to the first fold line so that both fold lines can kind of come up and over the card. Okay, with everything attached now to the back, you can see those tabs. It's a little flimsy, the card is, but remember I cut that extra four by nine panel to both stiffen up the card as well as cover the flaps on the back. Okay, now I have the structure of my card done and I'm ready to start decorating before I can put that second part of the closure on. These are technique videos, so I just use whatever paper I can find. I've got a couple older pieces from my stash here that seem to have some pretty colors. And this piece that has the medallions and the flowers on it, I noticed that this blue section right here would be perfect for my upper flap where I'm going to put the closure. There are lots of ways to layer the rectangles and frames from the Slim Flaps and Frames set. I just chose the medium rectangle. I'll start with the large rectangle from the set, then that medium one that I just cut, and then there is a cool little intricate frame in the set. And so the finer tip, the 20 gauge blue tip on my fine tip bottle is perfect for getting the glue on that. Now I can complete the other half of my closure. And this half is easier because it doesn't need twine. So I just stack my three remaining spacers in the center of that flower that I'm going to pierce down through the flap, opening up the card so that I don't go through the entire card, but just through the flap itself. Then I attach my washer using my other brad and open up the prongs inside. I will just cover those with paper. So magnets work great, or even just keeping your flaps closed by putting it in the envelope and it'll eventually flatten out. But if you do want a closure, this twine closure is another option. One of my favorite tools for emptying out an intricate die would be a Spellbinders tool in one. So we do sell those on our website, but great little wire brush for cleaning out a die. There's also a pretty scalloped rectangle in the set, and you always have the option to nest in some of the smaller rectangles to make frames. So I am just using the dies in the set in various ways to create all sorts of rectangles and frames. So on these blue pieces, for instance, I cut a rectangle out of the middle of that zigzag piece that actually came out of the middle of that frame. And because there are so many combinations of rectangles that you can make using this die set, you really can rely pretty much just on the pattern paper to be the decoration of the flaps. So that's kind of a time saver. You know, you don't have to, but you really can rely on pattern paper and then maybe just decorate one of the flaps with some die cuts. That's what I'm doing here. I'm using the garden charms. And then the two hearts from the Slim Flaps and Frames layered together. 
I can use the flap die again just over the tapered tab part to get a piece of paper to fit inside the flap to cover up the brad prongs and the end of the twine. Then I decorated inside the card using the largest rectangle die from the set. For the first flap, I didn't use a pop-up. I just decorated inside with more of the slim flaps and frames and our Happy Spring die. The Upsy Daisy pop-up die includes mirror image mechanism die, so that's perfect for the slim flaps and frames. What I like to do is mark an M through the triangle and a V through the tapered tab at the bottom. And I need one more of these ones with point towards the left and then one that has point to the right. M means mountain, so that means the two folds that are in the triangle wing of that pop-up should be mountain folds folded away from me. V means valley, so that means the four folds that are in the long section of the pop-up should all be folded as valley folds, folding toward myself. Then what I want to do is add some adhesive in the tapered tab over the V. I want to attach that tab to the other side of the pop-up, and I can do that in the flat position, just finding a position where it's flat, and then I can fold that tab over and onto the other side of the pop-up. Then I can work the folds in both directions. The small little rectangle is the base. That's the one that's the closest to the M triangle. And then the other end is the top. So I'm gonna mark those just to remind myself. Okay, finding the flat position means that the word base should be visible on one side, M should be visible on the other. It could be that you have that flipped the other way and you can't read the word base, so just make sure that you can read both. Now we're going to glue down the base, but it's the M triangle that's going to help us determine where. So the M triangle is going to go right in the fold of the card with the tip up at the top of that flap but we're actually gluing the base down. So we're working on the base side and now it's attached to the card in the right position. Okay, let me go down and do the next one. So M means mountain, I fold those two like mountains. V means valley, I fold these four like valleys. Then I put adhesive over my V tapered tab, find a flat position that I can fold that tab over and onto the other side of the pop-up. And then I work the fold in both directions. The small rectangle that's closest to the M is the base, I'll just put B this time, and T for top at the other end. It is the base that I want to glue down, but I have to find the closed flat position. So base on one side, M on the other. And it's the base that gets glued down, but the M is used to find the position. So the adhesive goes over the base tab, then I get the edge of the M triangle right in the fold of the card with the tip up at the top, and I'm pressing the base down to the card. And I'm going to leave my three pop-ups unattached right now. I'm not gonna attach the M triangles yet, and instead I'm going to work on the squares that are going to go on top. The Upsy Daisy includes two plain square dies. One is slightly smaller than the other, and that means that you can actually layer them and get a really thin border. And then what I'm going to do is attach my set of squares to one of the scalloped squares that comes in the Upsy Daisy set. For my first square, I'm going to use the fold over banners that come in the slim flaps and frames set. And I'll string three banners onto a piece of twine. And then I'll just use my little flosser to get the ends of the twine through the holes that are in the scalloped square from the Upsy Daisy set. Then I tie off the ends into a knot and then so that they don't flop around, I'm just gonna add a pop dot underneath the center one. So now my decorator square is ready to go on the top of the pop-up, and that's why I haven't attached the M triangle to the other side of the fold yet, because I would like to do this in the flat position. My adhesive on the top, and then finding a spot for my decorative square where it's going to be hidden by the flap when the card is closed. So I have very little wiggle room here, which is why I didn't want to attach my M triangles until I had my pop-up portion on. Now I can add my adhesive all over my M triangle, and then just keeping everything flat, I wanna close the flap against the exposed adhesive. And then that will attach that M triangle to the other side of the fold and make the pop-up start working. It'll lift that square up as it opens. 
and I just go slowly and really make sure that everything is adhered well before I start opening and closing the card a bunch of times. Okay, and then I just get to repeat that two more times. So let's speed things up. I've made two more squares and decorated them with garden charms. I add my adhesive to the top and make sure that that square is placed where it will be hidden. Then I add my adhesive to my M triangle, keep everything flat, close the flap against that triangle, and then just open slowly, make sure everything is adhered. And then my final one, same thing. I just add my adhesive to the top, put my square onto it, then the adhesive goes in the M triangle. I keep everything flat, close the flap against the exposed adhesive. So such a fun movement by using the upsy daisy mechanism and you can have all three of those squares coming up as the flaps open. I decided that there was an awful lot of green showing on my mechanism. So I just cut pieces of the same pattern paper to fit on that mechanism so that they kind of disappear a little bit. And then on the little triangle area that's exposed, I decided to add a little flower. That flower actually comes in the Upsy Daisy set. And then my last bit of decorating was just to add some more garden charms to the background of the card. So the watering can, the little gloves. Over here, I just made a square set to write a personal greeting, a couple tulips, and then that finishes out the interior of my card. And as you can imagine, this card is really just a template. You could use this for any colors and any theme. It is completely generic except for what you choose for your pattern paper and your embellishments. The finished card measures four by nine, so it will fit in a number 10 business envelope for mailing. I think that probably because of the layers of it, I would end up having to use my extra ounce stamp on it, but it will go through the mail no problem. Now, even though I didn't use magnets on this card, I often do. My favorite source is K&J Magnetics. I will put a link in the description box below this YouTube video for where to find those magnets. Here's another card where I've done a twine wraparound kind of closure, this time with a long side tab. And in this Slim Flaps and Frames card, I've got the mini pops being used with our picnic elements, but then also one of our tiny trees pop up. So there are several die sets, pop-up dies, that will fit in those Slim Flaps and Frames. So you really can get very creative with this die set. If you need more room for a pop-up, you could connect your two middle flaps to the same side and then use bigger pattern paper to kind of cover the seam and then you'll have a bigger flap that you can use for say our tiny house pop-up. So lots of possibilities with the slim flaps and frames. Now we do have a previously released die called slim frames that just makes frames to fit a slim line card. Those will work perfectly with the flaps as well. And for this card they're animated using the mini pops pop-up. I love to end assembly videos with some great cards by our team. So Kelly Booth made a pair of cards here using the slim flaps and frames with our tiny trees pop-up. Francis Byrne with a tiny trees summer themed card and then one that features a double flap for a house. Fran Sabad with a pair of birthday cards, the first one in a go wild theme and then the second one with some pretty pastel colors. Sandy Diller with bright fun colors on a birthday card. And then Lois Bach with a Welcome to Florida card. She's got some citrus trees, tiny trees. And then she's made a Mushroom House Fairy Garden card with a double center flap. The Slim Flaps and Frames die set is available now at a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as on our website, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.